This is the plaintiff, Anderson Gibbons. He says he purchased a condo in the defendant's building and gave a deposit to use the freight elevator. The defendant's accusing him of scratching the brass door frame of the elevator. He's refusing to return his money. So he's suing for the $2,500 he's most certainly owed. This is the defendant, Carl Monheit. He says the plaintiff renovated his condo and took no precautions to protect the floors or walls. The damages exceed his deposit. He violated multiple rules and he's not getting anything back because the building had to fix all the damages he caused. He's accused of holding on tight to a deposit. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $5,000 for legal fees and damages. All parties, please raise your right hand. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Milianzo is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, Your Honor. Okay, Mr. Gibbons, what's going on? I bought the condo in, I closed on condo in February of 2020. 2020. Okay. On right before COVID. Right, right before COVID. Okay. You have to give, I had to do some renovations. So like, I had to give a deposit of $1,000 just in case. Any, any damages happened any during the renovation? Yeah, on the elevator, right. Okay. At some point, one day, um, the superintendent of the building, he came and he said to me, what time did you bring the garbage out? I said, like maybe 10, 11 o'clock. He, he goes on his phone. When he check on his phone, he said, look, you were struggling with the garbage to get in the elevator. So I said, no. He had a video of it? Yes. Do you have that video? What? Did you know the video existed? There are cameras in the building. So you didn't bring me any videos? No. Why not? I didn't think the uh, video was germane to the, to the case. How do you not think the video of him damaging something is germane to a case where you're keeping his deposit because he damaged something? I mean, of course it's germane to the case. Does the video exist right now as we're talking? I don't know for sure. Okay. Are you the president of the board? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. So I said, no, I, it's impossible. For, we didn't do, I didn't do no damage. So he said, look, do you want me to stop the work? So I said, listen, look, I paid a thousand dollars just in case any scratches. So I don't want the work to be scratched, to be stopped because the work had previously been stopped because of the COVID. Who's doing the work? I'm a carpenter. I was doing okay. the work. I was there. So All right. Then, so according to you, the super tells you, what time did you take out the garbage? Here's a video of you and shows you a video of you struggling in the elevator? Yes, okay. the garbage. Okay, all right. Now, first of all, the elevator is a freight elevator. Mm -hmm. Number two, the elevator has approximately 200 to 300 scratches already. Number three, the elevator is not properly protected. The freight elevator is not properly protected. The, the wood paneling of the elevator is protected, but the the, the door post that they claim that I have the scratches on, that is what is not protected. Now, inside of the, inside of the elevator, there are other scratches on the elevator panel. There's other scratches. Did they ever fix the elevator? No, the elevator's it's not It's still fixed. got the scratches on. Yes, but this, this, is a, this is a constant ongoing thing because I've had people that moved out that they never got their money back. And in his one text from him, it will show you that he acknowledges that other people have already scratched the elevator. Okay, His let me text. see that. Thanks. You see, I got it written. You will only be responsible for your damages. We will be looking to minimize the cost of repair for you and all others. Is he all others? <laughs> the, other initial estimate, the initial estimate came in for your damages was over a thousand, if I recall correctly. Repairing elevator brass is not cheap. I also asked you correspond with the property manager copied here on. And hey, miss, okay. your honor. Yeah. Also, the property manager that he's telling me to, con to contact, she was not there in 2020. Okay, the super who said that to you, this is the same super who was letting you take baths in the, in the uh, according to you, the super was inappropriately allowing him to take baths in some closed lounge area during COVID? Because what, he had no water? Miss. Uh, don't call me miss again. Okay. Because he had no water? Yes, that's right. Okay. 
and that's the super we're talking about who was super nice to you and he he points out hey wait, look at this there's all these scratches you know your honor i was living in the condo i have another condo that i lived in i never took a shower in that there's no there's no place to me to, i never took a shower at that place. how is there a shower at the lounge the lounge has an exercise area. Oh, okay. It has a sauna, a shower, men's and women's, and it also leads to the swimming pool. And who told you that the super was, or is this before your time as president, that the super was allowing him to take showers in? Super told me. The super himself told you? Yes. It's the same super that was there then? Yes, ma'am. Did the super ever tell you there was a video and then you made the judgment that it was not germane? No, I didn't know there was a video. So why'd you tell me you didn't think it was germane? Otherwise, I would have looked for the video. Well, then why did you look me right in the eye and say, I didn't bring it because I didn't think it was germane? I didn't know it existed, therefore... Then I didn't why didn't you just it... say that and admit that you didn't know it was existed? Not that you knew it existed, looked at it, analyzed it, and said, judge doesn't need that. I mean, that's nutty to say that to a judge who's asking you for the evidence. So you're suing for the deposit because, according to you, what? They can't prove it's you? The reason I'm suing for the $2,500 because I didn't get my deposit back. Right, so you've made a $1,000 case into a $2,500 case by waiting two years to sue. For two years, and also, as a, and also as a deterrent for what is going on already. Okay, so I guess you're saying those are punitive damages punitive to punish them. All right, right. so and, I understand your lawsuit, yeah. but now my question to you is what evidence do you folks have that he, in fact, is the one who damaged it? The superintendent was watching the building as he normally does when there's any activity. In this particular case, because we had COVID, the building had shut down. So we had no contractors working in the building. We had no work going on in the building. We have a, an elderly population in the building. We were being super cautious. When but he lives in the building. And he was doing most of the construction himself at the beginning, well, at least, right? Did he, he, he lived there. He purchased the unit. I don't know when he lived there or when he didn't right, live there. Right, but even according to your rules, he has a right to be there. Yes. Right. And then, so what happens? You guys charge him a $1,000 deposit, and then you we, don't know when he's working on the unit? Well, he's supposed to be working during certain hours that are established for work, you know, um, so there's no, not noise in um, Did you ever receive time. a noise complaint? Not that I recall. Do you have any evidence that he was working beyond those hours? Just the correspondence between the manager and, and the uh, board. Right, but who's the witness to him damaging anything? If you have cameras everywhere, who's the, who, who, how can you say that the freight elevator was damaged by him and you know when it was damaged or did you just sit there and say, well, he's the guy doing work for the last four months so it must have been him. I, I don't understand the case. And unfortunately for you, the burden is on you folks to prove you're entitled to the thousand. Okay. The elevators were brand new in January. Of 2020? Of 2020. Can you prove that? Yes, but I don't know that I had that information with me. Did you bring any evidence to court? Yes, I have a, a lot of evidence. What evidence do you have? Because everything, every time I ask you, you don't have it. So it's... What do you have? A bunch of emails back and forth by people saying things that they don't have firsthand knowledge of? I'm totally uninterested in that. Okay. And $4,000 in legal fees to get a motion to dismiss because you got sued personally, which takes seven seconds to write. I'm also uninterested in that. What I'm really interested in is the evidence that he's the one who damaged it. So tell me why you have concluded that. By virtue of the information received through the super to the property manager. So where's the super? Why isn't the super testifying if he's the one who has the evidence? It's not just, oh, it, it cost 850 to fix, and it costs another 100 and something to fix the walls. It's... And you're the one who, that's the damages. But what about the liability? you got to prove he's liable. So I need to know. I mean, we're talking about a span that he was doing work of how many months? Four months or something? Wasn't anybody else moving in and out? No. We had limited contractors and move-ins and move-outs during that initial COVID period. Right. Now, I had seen the damages, but I saw them when it was brought to my attention. When it was brought to your attention was when? It was brought to my attention by the property manager in the super. And when? In, in the time frame of, of April. No, 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 no. I, don't, I don't deal in that. It was, it was a time the time frame. frame that's good for my side is not an answer. I'm I sorry. want to know when it was brought to your attention. If you can't testify, then you shouldn't be the only witness. So uh, do you I know? I understand what you're saying. Right. Well, do you know when it was brought to your attention? I, I could just refer back to sure. the yeah, go correspondence ahead. of the email. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Do you remember the date when the super says to you, hey, you know, you damaged the elevator? Yes. What day was that? It was the 13th of February. 
And when he tells you that, you say, hey, I gave you $1,000. Before I said that, I said, it's impossible. I didn't, I didn't damage the elevator. Mm -hmm. He said, do you want me to close the elevator down? But I need to get the work done. So I said, look, I'd give $1,000 just in case there's scratches or anything happens. So oh, and now, why are you complaining now that they kept your 1000 If you're telling them, keep it open, no, 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 you, no, no, you can take my 1000 no, I'm saying, do, I, I did this. So why are you um, harassing me about telling me I'm doing... Well, because they don't want you to damage it. But I didn't... See, I didn't damage it. Okay. And I got you have pictures, kind of uh, and it. sometimes you can tell in a condo what uh, apartment, what condo caused the damage because the damages start at the condo. Uh, for example, I'll give you an example particularly near and dear to my heart. If one of your neighbors brings out a leaky copier and you see the ink trail from that neighbor's apartment all the way to the elevator, you pretty much know who brought out the, the ink leaking copier. So do, I see pictures that the condo board has sent me to look at, but I don't see the continuity of door to elevator to see that he did it. So do you have video or anything like that that might show me um, the evidence that I'm looking for? Or do you have I have Hold on. Go ahead. I have photos of the trail between the apartment and the elevator. Okay. Are those the photos you've already given me? I'm not sure that they were. I'm not sure either. Let's see what you have. Like, for example, you folks submitted this picture, but I don't know what I'm supposed to be looking for in that picture. That's uh, leading from the apartment, his apartment, towards the elevator lobby. Right, but what am I looking at? What at do I carpet, see there? At the carpet that was damaged. Where is the damage to that carpet? It had been cleaned. Oh, well, then this picture shows me nothing of the damages, it's right? It was just to represent okay. the trail between the apartment and the... Yeah, but if it's clean, it doesn't show me anything. So what is this picture supposed to show me? That's the doorway that leads from the apartment Are there any lot. damages that I'm supposed to see there? Well, there were damages to the door. They're not showing up in the photo because the doors had been repaired and touched okay, up Okay, whose job the is it to document the damages? Because all they're documenting are the repairs, not the damages, right? And I can't see the damage that's going to show me that he did it. Elevator scratches. These are still there, right? Right. All right, so I know there's elevator scratches. This picture proves there are elevator scratches. Right. Okay, the question is still, who scratched it? What is this a picture of? That's the door. The door. That, who, that's, that's the fire door the between the apartment block and the elevator lobby. That right, so someone pass. scratched that, but there's a, other apartments too, right? Yes, there's four other apartments on that side. Are the there door, cameras on this floor? No. Are there cameras in the elevator? Yes. And there are cameras downstairs in the common area? In the lo main lobby and the uh, parking level. But you don't have cameras on the individual floors because that's considered kind of an invasion. Right. Yeah, you, you guys have done a great job of proving that there are damages and you've taken a picture of his apartment. What you haven't done is link them by showing me that in fact it comes from him. And that's the part I'm missing. It was the only one that was active in the building at the time. And it was brought to his attention when it was found by the superintendent and the manager. Who is Bridget? She's the current manager. Okay, and in order to prepare you for small claims, she says, according to my file, the damages are as follows. He moved in in the evening, April 20th. How is that a damage? I think she was just recounting the series of events. Because is he supposed to move in in the evening or he's not supposed to move in not in the evening? Not supposed to move in in the evening. Okay, so in other words, he violated the condo rules by moving in. Uh, but there's no damage because that contractor's working in the unit at night and during the weekend. Is Other than her saying that now after he sued you, is there any documentation that you guys said to him, hey, you damaged the elevator? Any documentation where you guys said to him at the time, as you should, as a condo board should, we have evidence that you were, have been doing this, you've been working at night, there have been complaints, whatever. Is there any evidence that the condo board ever sent him anything, or the management ever sent him anything, documenting that he was working during the nights and weekends, or is the only evidence you have of that something that was sent to you a week and a half ago? To my knowledge, it was verbally discussed with him. And nobody, right. and your management office doesn't have the policy of writing down verbally discussing violations of the rules? Not that we can find, no. Not that you can find, or it's not your policy? It should be the policy. It, it is, is the, the policy. It is the policy, right? It is right? the policy to but correspond. But it wasn't followed. It is the policy to correspond and identify it, but those were some very stressful times. Do you have anyone else you wish to call as a witness, uh, Mr. Monheit? No. Okay, and you have a counterclaim. Let's talk about your counterclaim. 
Your counterclaim is for $5,000 because according to you, you have $4,274 in legal fees for what? The, the first lawsuit that came in was against the property manager's principal. He was- it, Individually. Individually. Yeah, so that takes five seconds to get dismissed. Why well, would it be $4,000? They had to prepare for court. Well, yeah, prepare for court what? You file a motion to dismiss and it gets dismissed. Yeah, I mean, I, I've looked at the entries. Can I ask you a question? Do the bylaws allow you to collect legal fees against a homeowner if... I don't know if it's specific to legal it's fees. It's not. I looked at everything you sent me and it doesn't say. And that's the only document, either the bylaws or any rules that are promulgated in accordance with the bylaws that would allow you... Hey, if we, and a lot of condos do this. I mean, I live in condo world. I live in Miami. And a lot of condos will do this. They'll say, if, if we enter litigation and we win, you got to pay our legal fees. And your, yours don't have that. So they either should have that or you should have had that for me because I've looked at everything you've sent me and you don't have anything else to show me today. And so you don't have a right to ask for legal fees, assuming that the legal fees were reasonable. Because if you have a right to ask for legal fees, they still have to be reasonable. What exactly... Did they do every entry? I see that the law, first of all, did you guys actually pay $4,274 to yeah. your attorney? Yes. Do you have the proof that you paid your attorney $4,274? I have the invoices, the bills are paid. Okay, do you have proof that you paid? N not with me. Okay, we're done. And uh, here's what's gonna happen. You don't get an extra $1,500 because you're angry. Okay. Uh, or because you took two years to sue. But um, I see apps, you have 100% proved that there has been damage to your elevator. You know what, you didn't prove that he did it. And that's an essential element of keeping the $1,000. You have to prove that he did it. The best evidence you have came out of his mouth, not yours, where he's saying, oh, they accused me of doing it in February. And I told them, you've got my deposit, don't hassle me, man. Um, that's basically the best evidence you have. That's not him admitting he did it, and that's not evidence he did it. It's a simple thing that you have to do when you come to court. You can represent the company, but if you don't have any first-hand knowledge of anything, then you're not the best person to be here alone. You could be here, but not alone. You should have with you the person who says, I caught him red-handed, and I, you know, I told him it. And if not, then at least something from the management saying, you've been working at night, you've done this, we've gotten complaints, you can't do that, you damaged the wall, the wall was clean yesterday, and we just noticed the damage today, and you're the only person. But you can't wait for the guy to finish. Four months later, I go, eh, you ain't got a thousand dollars back, you did a bunch of damage. And then have nothing in court to prove that you're entitled to it. I am ruling in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of the thousand dollars and on the counterclaim because I'm ruling in his favor you're not entitled to um, the 850 or the 13665 and you're certainly not entitled to legal fees not just because I think they're immensely bloated and you have no proof of paying them but it's not that it's that you don't have you have to have a legal right to the fees it has to be in their contract so I would have to see it in the bylaws or the rules so I uh, on your counterclaim against him zero on his claim against you one thousand dollars so the plaintiff prevails in this case. He gets $1,000, not the $2,500 he was seeking. And the defendant, Mr. Manheit, gets nothing for his $5,000 countersuit. Uh, Mr. Manheit, this is a tough case for you to represent by yourself. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, very much so. I mean, yeah, you, you're in a very tough position, and you didn't have a lot of evidence. So obviously not going to prevail. What are your thoughts about this? Well, I think it's um, an administrative difficulty when you have 143 apartments and you have all these things going on at the same time as COVID and to have the documentation that the judge required, um, we weren't able to do that. Okay, good enough. And uh, Mr. Thank Gibbons, you. who is the plaintiff in this case, who was seeking $2,500. He doesn't get the $2,500. He gets only the $1,000 that was his security deposit. Let's see what he has to say. Mr. Gibbons, let me ask you how you feel about this now that it's over. Well, I'm happy to retrieve my $1,000, but I'm sad to see that this guy, he lied so much. Now, see, I wanted, I want, okay. I want, right. what, I would have, what I wanted was for the judge to make certain stipulations that I wouldn't be harassed because I've been harassed since, since the court case went on. I've been harassed as far as I was having something delivered. Well, she said I could only bring one chair in per day. Mr. Gibbons, you could have brought this all up in the lawsuit, but it really doesn't matter. Okay, no now. problem. It's Thank you. We finished. Good, goodbye. You, you don't get what you were seeking.
So, Doug, in a situation like this, the burden is on the landlord to prove the damage and specifically that the tenant caused the damage during the tenancy. In this case, landlord couldn't prove it. You should know that when landlords withhold security when they shouldn't, sometimes they can be penalized from two to three times the actual amount that was withheld. Marilyn, did you choose your engagement ring or was it a surprise? It was a surprise, right? Yeah. Is that the correct answer? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure, unless you're thinking of a previous marriage. No, no, right. it, was, it was a surprise. It was okay. a surprise. I mean, right. the fact that it was happening wasn't a surprise. I was right. searching searching your bags all the time to find out when it was right. happening. Right, right. Um, no Fourth Amendment protection at my No, in not at my house. <laughs> no. But, no. Uh, but yeah, no, the actual ring was a surprise, which I... Still wearing it. Yep. There it is. Yep. Yeah, I just... Uh, I guess, but you don't wear it all the time, do you? I do. What do you mean? Uh, I thought, because I see different rings on your hands. Every no, not, there. never this. That you see one different never rings changes. on That's this hand. One. Yeah, yeah this hand. has always had the very, right. the very same ring. Yeah. I, th I, th I think I took it off once for some right. reason. Yeah. And I think to clean it, and then I forgot to put it back on, and I actually flew here. Right. And everyone was like, are they getting a divorce? Oh and it was God. just that I had forgotten Look, to put it Don't ever take back it off. Do you know how many quarters I had to put in that gumball machine? <laughs> I mean, over and over until that thing popped out. I was like, you know, so please don't lose it, okay? I don't, I don't have that many.